So this is Paul Brarin from Tinkertry.com, and I'm here at Expert to Expert Virtualization Conference here in Las Vegas. I got three folks here who were at this conference with me. I got to present earlier today, and all of you guys have super servers. So if you can introduce yourself, your Twitter handle, and then I'll get into a little bit about what you're doing with your machines. Sure. My name is Jason Samuel. Uh, my Twitter handle is at underscore Jason Samuel, and uh, I use my super server for pretty much all my lab work. Cool. And Carl? Hey, I'm Carl Webster. Twitter handle is Carl Webster, and I use my awesome server for all my uh, article writing and scripting and stuff that I do on carlwebster.com. All right. Yeah, my name is Eric from Senate Blog, and my Twitter handle is at Senate Blog, and I'm using the super server for, for my lab work, and I actually now picked up another one, so I'm going to have two. Can you let me know the topic you presented, Eric, at this conference? What was so, your title? So at this conference, I presented how to automatically build the uh, PVS images. Uh, basically, automation is what I'm doing. So for me, it's good to have uh, this kind of super server because I can boot into uh, the different hypervisors. So I can have multi-boot. actually do double boot now, but I could actually add Hyper-V without any problem. The limit is, is the SSD disk. So just put in more SSD disk and you can boot to whatever hypervisor you want. So I'm using that so I can test my automation framework with the various uh, VMware tools running inside of the VM. So Eric, you've been super helpful and super early on getting one uh, last fall. And you loaded it up with an Intel SSD, like full length um, enterprise, and then you have a Samsung 950. What have you found yourself using in the many months? You've owned it like nine months now, the first one. Yeah. Um, what do you use the data? What are you using on the 950, for instance? What's laid down on that? Oh, for the uh, for the work for, uh, for the basic workloads, I put it on the slow Samsung 850. So because I have two terabytes of disk there. Yep. You went and high end, full two terabytes. That's the Evo, a little more affordable. Yep. Yeah. And for for the rapid uh, workloads like uh, setup workloads or VMware View, I put on the faster storage like the 950 and the Intel 750, so to get the max performance, especially when we do load testing to see uh, which one is the fastest with logging VSI. And back to Brazil with something that fits in your overhead luggage there, 15 pounds. Yeah, um, what are you using the second one for? You so just now I'm up? bringing the second one so we can uh, do better low load. Uh, Testing with Logan VSI, of course, when you have domain control or SQL so on the same host, uh, you don't get a real picture. So what I'm going to do when I get back home, I'm going to put uh, four VMs with four vCPU and 32 gigs of memory, and we're going to push this uh, little box to the limit using Logan VSI. All right, you doing anything with 10 gig yet, or you haven't gotten a switch or direct cabling? Yeah, I don't have the switch, but okay. now with, with two boxes, I can use the link cable. So next year, when I pick up the third one, I have to go with a 10 gig switch. Nice. So that'll be uh, VMware's ESXi. You'll be putting 10 gig drivers, or what operating yeah, system you're exactly. Okay. Yeah. And there's a new one that came out last week, by the way. So I need to update that article. I think I've got. Yeah, the we still. also have uh, Sensor Seven coming out uh, that came out last week. So I'm going to test that and see which has the performance. Nice. Thank you, Eric. And uh, Carl, what was the title of your presentation again this morning? Redesigning your Active Directory. All right, and uh, what what kind of uh, hard drives do you have? What or solid state drives do you have in your server? Well, your it server? came with the one terabyte. And That's right. I, you have the bundle one mm -hmm. with the GPU as well. Yep, and then I already had another one terabyte SSD from Crucial that I ordered a drive carriage for, that I use for my VMs. The one terabyte uh, is for all my data uh, and stuff that I use for my website, my articles, documents, and stuff. The second one terabyte is for all my VMs that I run using VMware Workstation, and that I use for my various versions of Zen Desktop and uh, Zen App PVS. So I've got uh, all the 7.7, 7, 7, 7.8, and as soon as I get home, I'll add the 7.9 stuff to it. So the PVS servers, the controllers, and stuff reside on the super fast. Uh, server and then all the VMs reside on my uh, Zen server host uh, running to my closet. All right, so the M.2 slot is still not used on yours. Correct. All right, and uh, upcoming one terabyte from Samsung 950. That could be interesting. I'm waiting for mm -hmm. that myself. It'll be pricey, 600 plus. Yeah. Um, strangely, uh, OCZ, I think, just announced the one terabyte in shipping. And so Samsung's two, three months behind. They, they promised the world first quarter they're going to have a one terabyte. They didn't pull it off, I don't know why. So just pointing that out, if you end up looking for a one terabyte data store, 
And Eric, it sounds like your you know premium storage is your NVMe, and you get pretty spoiled by it, right? Um, yes, yeah, so I'm just running Windows 10 on mine, and then in Windows 10, I'm running VMware Workstation 12.1, and that's what I run all my uh, Zen app, Zen desktop, PBS infrastructure on, and then all the VMs are just hosted on the Zen servers. Did you end up messing with the NVMe driver uh, and your Windows 10 preload? No. Okay. And um, auto update, and you put Samsung Magician on there, did you, or any of that? Nope. Didn't even bother? I haven't done it, no. Nope. All right, and then video. The AMD, the, the Vision Tech card, 7750, had some issues with auto update in the beginning, and then three weeks later, Windows update would just pull it down, and you get a solid AMD driver. You had a couple hiccups here in May of 2016, yeah. but you got around them doing what was that? Um, I believe the default was uh, optimized for speed and then there's also an option for optimized for quality and then um, the, another option and I selected the optimized for quality and then that is seemed to have stabilized the driver. You would get an NVIDIA pop up in the bottom right saying the driver stopped and restarted that kind of instability? Yep. Not a blue screen of death. Okay. Nope. Cool. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Jason, for being so patient over here. Oh, so sure. your story, I think, is all these stories are super compelling. You shared with me a little bit about your old gear versus right. your new. Can you tell me what you had yeah, before? Yeah, sure. I had a half rack full of servers that I have acquired over my career, and I was using that for my lab. Problem is, uh, the amount of electricity it took every time I powered something on was, I mean, it made my lights dim. And then, uh, <laughs> and couldn't then use the, the dryer. Or... Yeah, and the amount of heat it puts out, because I couldn't really run everything all at once without a lot of heat buildup. So um, around the time that you started talking about this solution, I was looking at Intel Nooks and Mac Minis, and it just happened to work out that you had something, you were, you were blogging about something that was not only, uh, not only does it sip electricity, but it doesn't put out much heat at all. So I tried the system and it works perfect. I have an S2, or pardon me, an M2 SSD, mm -hmm. and that's running my hypervisor. And then I have a bunch of Western Digital red drives that are just, uh, I'm using just for my storage. What's your hypervisor? I'm running ESXi 6 right now. Okay, and but, then what's the uh, M.2 you bought? Um, it was the Samsung Evo, uh, I can't remember. Wait, uh, the 950 Pro? Yeah. Yeah, the okay. same, okay, the one same gum stick, yeah? Right. And you were watching the blog, uh, I, I started blogging about it late June, I first unboxed the first yes. in World 1540. That's you great. got it soon after in, in Eric too. That's correct. Okay, yeah. so you guys real early adopters. And right. Carl, when you got yours, uh, the Bundle 1 pretty early as well? Um, when did I get just, just, just a, two ago? Yeah, just yeah. a month or two ago. Oh, okay, yours is more recent. Yeah. So something interesting yeah. that they came out with the 12, uh, 16 core, and a guy in Canada got the first in the world of that and gave me uh, uh, my hands on it over IPMI, uh, and I recorded a video already. Um, something interesting showed up in the Supermicro, seven-year product life. So they're claiming they're going to keep making that same motherboard for seven years. So this wow. is very different than Intel Nooks or like blade parts or stuff you get on eBay where you have a trouble finding the parts, you know, months into or years into ownership. This seems like it should be pretty easy for all, any of us to get parts even three, four years down the road yeah. when we're long out of warranty. Yeah. I think uh, these are good signs for the ZND. Jason right? was talking about his previous equipment. I had a, uh, a Core i7 little compact box uh, that was my main computer okay. uh, with 12 gig of RAM in it. Oh. And Man, that sucker was loud. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with this, I now have 64 gig of RAM. I have the, the Xeon D processor. Yeah. Uh, I've got three SSDs in it. I also added a 256 gig SSD in the in the hot swap tray. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's where I've redirected all my temp files, my downloads, and all that stuff to it. Because if I lose it, there's nothing on there that you know I care about. Um, but I actually have uh, the little servers actually sitting on my desk behind my three 24-inch monitors, and I don't hear. Nice. Yeah, okay. Same as mine. How do you feel about fiber channel FC adapters for 10 gig? As I wrap this up here, that's kind of my last question. Uh, uh, there's uh, there's competitors that have fiber channel, and they have a flex ATX, a bigger chassis that wouldn't fit in overhead luggage. It'd be a little wider. So it's good. Other companies are making ZND. That, that's fine. What I'm finding is they seem to all be not using RG45, which I like because it gives me more one gig drops in the meanwhile until I get to 10 gig. Yeah. Do you guys feel similarly? Yeah. All right, and are you actually using those 10 gig drops or you haven't even touched not, them yet? Nah, not yeah, yet. Yeah. Not yet. And um, I will you're actually buying a switch? Oh, sorry. I said I will as I add more servers because I do plan on probably adding anywhere from two, four, six oh, wow. more of these. 
Oh, uh, to run uh, Zen Server and possibly uh, uh, ESXi 6 or awesome. whatever is available at that time. Yeah, I think our, our mutual because challenge. Because it uses so little power and puts out yep. so little heat, I can actually leave them on all the time and not worry about it. That's a key point. Uh, Jason, did you have that rack on all the time? No, I couldn't. Um, yeah. it, it, it was right behind me, right? So I had my desk there. If I turned everything on, I can go maybe an hour tops before right. I have to like leave the room. And, and now with the with, with the super server, I've got it 50 feet away in a closet, and I don't hear it. It's running headless. Uh, there's no heat buildup, so it runs 24/7. Yeah, two people came up to me asking about VGA and keyboard. I'm like, yeah, you don't need it. Just yeah. that extra fifth gigabit cable or 10 100 doesn't really matter, right? For IPMI, and you're good to go. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's impressive that you're thinking of that many. You'd probably get a one gig switch, well, a I ten live, gig switch. I live in Tennessee, yep. uh, under the Tennessee Valley Authority Electric, and they use time of day billing. Uh -huh. So, at various points of the year, during the day, the electric rates can be thirty to forty-five percent higher. Yeah. And so, I can't leave my current lab servers powered. Well, they are powered on while I'm here, uh, so I could access them. But normally, I can't leave them on all the time because I don't want to pay the extra electricity. So yeah. that's one of the benefits the, of buying the servers. I can actually reduce the amount of heat that's generated, therefore the amount of cooling that I need up in my uh, enclosed office. They're quieter and they're going to use less electricity. So I'm going to save all around. Have you looked into um, Wired Zone? Was reluctant to get into UPS, it's shipping them as a bundle, but they're expensive to ship, and it's hard to compete with Amazon there, yeah. right? With Amazon Prime getting a UPS in two days for free shipping Yeah. again. But are you thinking about that? Any of you guys gone with a UPS? You already had a I, UPS I've in your house? i got nine UPSs in my okay, house. Okay, so you are well equipped. Do right. you do any kind of automated shutdown or you didn't bother? You just have Windows 10. Uh, my NAS has the automated shutdown. That's important. Corruption, yeah. yep. And yeah. Jason, you got uh, some... APC. Okay, so you had yeah, something already. Yeah. I've got nine APCs. Yep, and then um, you're thinking of something, right? Yeah. And I guess you're going to try to fly home from uh, Norway or something, right? <laughs> All right, well, well, thank you. Uh, one last thing would be, if you're talking to the product planners, there's always problems or, or room for future improvement. So here's your chance. What is it you would improve in the next generation, which I'm trying to get off the ground, a 12 core and a 16 core, and look, you know, one, two years down the line, what could be improved? Well, I'll go left to right, Jason. Um, maybe different types of RAID controllers, uh, different options. Okay, so maybe a little wider chassis had RAID on board. Mm -hmm. Is that appealing or not a PCI card? You want something on board? Right, right. Okay, and those seem to be trickling out. Uh, some competitors, I think, already have integrated LSI. Carl? I can't think of anything, man. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I'm, I like the system, and I haven't found anything that says, oh, man, I wish they had done this or whatever. I, I've had, other than the little video driver issue, I, I mean, I've had no issues with the server it's perfect and great i hadn't found anything that I, I would say needs to be improved on all right and we gave eric the most time to think what do you got uh, i would like to see the intel iris pro if it's if it's possible so the what sorry In, intel iris pro oh graphics, graphics? So okay so it's, with the soc so as a citrix user yeah something like an intel nook the skull trail yeah. gamer Getting a GPU thrown in there that's efficient on the motherboard has appeal. Whereas for Jason and I using VMware, we don't want it. It's just burning watts doing nothing. Doesn't work. Correct. So it's you're gonna have different perspectives. And that talking with the NVIDIA guys yesterday, you know, watch the space. Uh, right now, Carl and I are using AMD solutions on there. I'd really like to see NVIDIA. That's my feedback. Is please, NVIDIA, let us fit a low-profile under 60 watt GPU to get a taste of VGB, maybe vGPU goodness, like grid-like or even at least let VDT work, not cripple it like they're doing now. That's why I'm using AMD. So those are my, my feedback right there. Thank you so much, guys. I know uh, some of you in the rush to the airport. I really appreciate this. Uh, enjoy watching this on YouTube soon. Bye-bye.